Well, hello guys, welcome back. I'm so sorry it's been a while since I've put a video up. It's just one of those things where life and work has got in the way a little bit and kind of threw me off, but I will do better. But before we get into this next one, how about a bit of this? <laughs> So what I want to talk to you about is fuel management. As you know, I put a Cobra slash cut exhaust system on the bike back in, I think it was March or whenever, it was in the winter, end of winter. And uh, I knew what to expect when I did it. There was a good chance it'd be popping. There was a good chance of some lunging and just basically unfinished feel about the whole thing. And that's exactly what happened. There was a lot of popping on deceleration, uh, actually to the point where it was Bloody annoying, quite honestly. The lunging in, in when I was shifting down into lower gears, sitting around 30 miles an hour in third, I was getting that. It just kind of wanted to lunge forward every time. And uh, it was just, just wasn't a smooth ride, and I wanted a smooth ride. So I finally invested in a power management module. Power Command is popular. A lot of guys get those. Ah, uh, oh, Dyna. So, geez, my brain's gone dead. Uh, it's a company I used when I rejetted my uh, carburetors one time. But anyway, the one that I chose, cut to the chase, was the Cobra FI 2000, which is matched with the Cobra exhaust system. I didn't want to go too crazy and get a really expensive one. You can go up to 400 plus on uh, some of those systems that allow you to customize it with a phone you know, using an app. Well, I didn't really see the need for that. It's an older bike. I'm not sure exactly how long I'm going to have it, but I did want to improve the ride. I wanted to make it worthwhile doing the upgrades that I did. So for an extra 220 bucks, I put this FI 2000 on. And I have got to tell you, it's amazing. So without further ado, let's get to the garage, shall we? All right, so here we are on the bike. This is according to the instructions. First of all, the bike is warm. It's uh, run at um, operating temperature. That's what the instructions call for. The right side panel has to come off as well as the seat to do the job. So uh, I'll put the camera on hold for a bit, get those off and we'll continue. So I get back from my ride and of course I'm riding in jeans. And then the magic of camera and if you're new to motorcycle riding you've never ridden a motorcycle before and uh, maybe this is your first time ever looking up close at a motorcycle there may be somebody out there this thing here is called an exhaust pipe and when you run it to warm up the bike don't touch your bare leg on it like this because it burns like Okay, just pointing that out. This is the, your health and safety brought to you by Governor Rides. Right, so here we are. What I'm gonna do is install this FI 2000 fuel management system. It's made by Cobra, right in there. And it is designed to work with a Cobra aftermarket exhaust system. I have the slash cuts, which are in another video. And they did say that there's a good chance you'll get some popping and some surging or some other potential issues. And um, this is supposed to compensate for that, plus improve the running, get rid of some of the popping that I'm actually seeing on uh, D-cell and, and uh, some of the surging that you see when you're starting to labor the, the engine a little bit, which you really shouldn't do on a Honda VTX 1800, but you know sometimes you do. So it comes with the, the actual fuel module itself over here, it also has uh, T-tap connectors, and there are actually three cable ties, bless them, they did put three in, but um, there's only two now, I've dropped it somewhere. But anyway, full set of instructions, I've read through the instructions and compared it to what the bike has for wiring, and everything looks like it's gonna go very well. So, a um, little plug for the band there, Gilroy. Good show last night, by the way. Traditions Pub in Fillmore always wanted to play the filmer. 
comes with uh, some tuning information. You can customize this. There are three little pots you can adjust, but it comes preset for this motorcycle, which is a VTX 1800, of course. We're gonna put it in. We're gonna test it, see how it runs. Maybe make some adjustments. Maybe we don't have to. But I have warmed the bike up. I took it out for a ride as they recommend to get it to normal operating temperature before we install this unit. So anyway, without further ado, let's get this thing on and see how she runs. So the side panel, right side panel is off. And the seat, of course. There's not really a ton of um, stuff to remove from the bike. For some reason, I thought you had to get under the tank. Maybe that's a different fuel module. There's some plug and play ones where you don't require tapping into wires. And by the way, if you, you hear engines way off in the distance, there's a uh, racing going, some kind of racing going on at Walworth County Fairgrounds today. So anyway, um, yeah, I've already started this. I've got the wire exposed, as you can see, the brown wire, which we're going to tap into. Set this next up on top of the uh, ECU, ECM, I don't know what it's called, ECU, on top of the ECU. And feed the wires down. I'm going to be stopping and starting the video. So there we go. It's going to come down. It's a fiddly little thing. There we go. It's got to come down on the other side of the frame, otherwise, of course, it will get crunch between the frame and the seat. I'm, I'm assuming you've never done this before. You experienced guys in motorcycle mechanics. You probably want to keep moving. There's nothing new to see here. But, uh, this is me in fairly layman's terms because I haven't done anything like this before. I'm offering it out to somebody that is in the same position as me. So I hope it's useful. Anyway, T-taps. Let's concern ourselves with those. We're going to put this onto the wiring. It does say no closer than one inch to the uh, connections here. So we're, we should be all right further back. Place that on. I want to be able to make this all accessible because we're going to plug into it. I want to go back a little bit further. Get that. Like that. Get the pliers. Get a pair of snap-ons. A bit fiddly, especially with people like me who are a bit ham-fisted at the best of times. There we go. Click. Done. That's it. That easy. As I said, the uh, the more expensive modules do have a plug-and-play capacity, capacity or whatever it is, whatever the word is. We don't have to put these T connectors in, T tap connectors. All right. Now you take the brown wire, and this is all in the instructions, there's no secret squirrel stuff you've got to figure out for yourself, it's all here, and you plug the brown wire into, and I apologise if you can't see this, but I might have to zoom in a bit on post, but this snaps directly, there we are, zoomed in a bit. So, downer with GoPro, you can't zoom in while you're recording. So, unfortunately, but there we go. That's the brown wire set into the brown wire in the motorcycle loom, the stock loom. Okay, now this black one here with the ring, with the eyelet on it, that is going to this 10 millimeter bolt right here. And I recommend that when you do this, you make sure there's no paint or corrosion or anything between the bolt and the frame before you put this on. In fact, there's a, a, a bunch of guys out there called Badass Choppers that recommend that you do a, what's called a ground fix on the VTX 1800. That is, remove all the grounds. There's uh, grounds on the other side which we're not going to concern ourselves with. But to remove all the, the bolts and the grounds and remove the paint because uh, Honda, in their wisdom, went and sprayed the whole frame and then released the bike with grounds attached to a painted frame. Most of you know that's not the best kind of a ground we want. So you take this off and uh, scrape off the paint if there is any. I haven't actually done this one. The one on the other side was already done. 
Um, so we're going to see if it needs doing or not and do it. Because believe it or not, having poor grounds on this bike not just um, uh, you know, affects your general performance, but it also affects some of the sound and the popping because it interferes with the ECU. Now, this is what I've read, I'm not just making this up. So um, that's just on the source and forums and other places to go where you can get information on this ground fix issue. So anyway, long or the short of it, do your grounds. All right, you can already see there that there is a coating of paint that's going to interfere with our ground. That is not what we want. So I'm going to have to scrape that off. I'm not entirely sure I have a, a Dremel tool, or I know I don't have a Dremel tool, but a tool of that style to get that off. That paint has to come off. There's no point. If you're not going to remove the paint, send the module back. It's no use to you. All right, so we're gonna come up with a way of doing that first and we're back in a second. All right, found something that was gonna work. I've got a, um, a grit, a grit, what do you call that thing? Um, you know what it is, it's one of those things, it's like a, uh, it's like a grinding wheel, mini grinding wheel, portable, portable grinding wheel. Anyway, I've come up with a, a way of doing this. I, I just happen to have one of these um, mounted um, grit <laughs> bloody hell why can't I think of the name of it oh yeah so here I have a come up so I've come up with something that might work I have a mounted um, deburring wheel which is a, a, a sanding wheel grinding wheel I should say got it mounted in a little drill I'm gonna get that paint off without hopefully <laughs> knocking the paint off of the frame here we go That's looking good. Bit of a reflection there. I think that's not paint. Oh, paint. There we go. So as they say, where there's a will, there's a relative. No, that's not what they say. Where there's a will, there's a way. Here we go. Let's try it. Okay, good. I'm liking that. Now, if you're like me and you're very picky, you're gonna go and get a voltmeter now, and you're gonna check from here to your frame, or your, to your engine casing here, whatever, to make sure you've got a nice solid ground. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So right, we're touching the leaves together here. As you can see, let me zero out, I was close to it, there we go. Right, now I'm gonna to touch on the motorcycle engine itself over here I'm using a camera on a stand so it's a bit awkward but there we go touching the engine frame and I'm coming over to here to where I just sanded All right, I'm calling that a good ground. 0.5, 0 0.5, so I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. That would tone out if we were using a, a voltmeter with a tone. All right, let's get back on it again. Here we go. This is the bolt that I took out, a 10 millimeter bolt. And here is the ground wire. Put that through there. Right. 
And today is Sunday, June 6. Uh, actually, a very significant date in history. June 6, 1944, the D-Day landing. So a little nod to those guys, those heroes. God bless them. We wouldn't be where we are today without them. All right. So we're going to tighten that up. And uh, it is actually, I think, close to 90 degrees outside. I'm sitting here completely surrounded by no yeasty beverages, which we're going to have to fix pretty soon here. So here we go. Hi, hi. What's going on? There we go. Didn't want to play there for a second. Uh, I've said this before, I don't have a torque wrench. I'm going to have to talk to my mate E.T. Snap on. Hook me up. <clears throat> Live now, pay later. That's what I say. All right, so that's hooked up. We've got the ground. We've got a brown wire T-tapped into the um, main harness, the, the factory harness. And I'm moving on to the next stage. All right, continuing with the instructions. Now, I'm gonna put these in front of the camera here. I'm gonna zoom in, this, this might be a pointless exercise, but it says here, on the front side of the factory ECU, find the pink with a blue stripe and a pink with a yellow stripe. Coming out of the ECU, tap, attach the tap connectors, T-tap connectors for the we invented the language, still can't speak it. Attach the T-tap connectors to each of those two wires, then plug the corresponding colored wires from the FI2000 to each of those T-tap connectors. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because uh, Cobra, one of those companies that have had a bad reputation in the past for really vague uh, instructions. And, and most of the time, you're, you're better off going on YouTube and finding this stuff for yourself. Well, I couldn't actually find a YouTube video specific to this bike and for this module. So um, that's why I'm making one. And uh, happy to say that the instructions so far have matched the install. Now I'm doing some stop starting with video here just for the sake of uh, continuity and keeping it clean. But so far I'm on about 20 minutes, which is really not bad. So um, by the time I get done, I'm hoping to be around 35, 40. But anyway, if I shut up talking for a second and uh, find those two wires, pink with the blue stripe, pink with the yellow stripe, and tap into them, and we can continue. So here we go. There's those. There's those two wires there. Oops, sorry. There's those two wires. Here's the pink with the blue and then I don't know if that's pink with the yellow I think my eyes might be deceiving me so we'll check that for a second so anyway yes I was correct that's pink with blue pink with the yellow and those are the two that we are tapping in with the t-tap connectors and plugging the module in right well I'm fully zoomed in anyway so hopefully you'll see what's going on here's the pink with the blue here's the pink with the yellow and uh, I'm not gonna get any closer. Sorry about that. I just can't do it. So we'll put the T-tap connectors in. Try and keep more than anything. Uh, less, uh, try not to go. So I'm gonna do this and uh, try and keep m more than an inch away from the module. That's what they're called for. Don't know why. Maybe somebody out there can tell me. Crimp that puppy down. I've used T-tap connectors before, and I'm comfortable with them. I just I don't like them as a method. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there think uh, the same as I do that plug and play is better. But I didn't want to buy a really expensive fuel commander. There's the the Power Pro up at 400, superb device, and it's adjustable with a, a cell phone app, which is even cooler. But the, this bike is it's getting on. And um, I don't know how long I'm going to keep it. So all I want is to get rid of the popping. I want the improve, little improvement in the performance. And I don't want to do any damage to the, uh, the bike itself by not 
managing the fuel properly after putting those aftermarket pipes on. Anyway, small talk while we're working here. It's a beautiful day out there, I tell you. Last time I did a video outside, the sun was shining, but there was snow on the ground. I had those days are behind for a while. So anyway, here we go. We've got the pink and yellow that are on the module harness here, and the pink with the blue, and you just match one to the other. Once you put these T-tap connectors in, I'm trying to, there's enough light. I really do hope you can see this. Once you've put those T-tap connectors in, sorry this is a bit clunky. I'll try and edit it, but it might not be worth it. You're pretty much plug and play. You, you're creating the plug and play, basically. So if you're doing a good T-tap connection, you won't have anything to worry about. There we go. Again, I'm going to try and edit some of this clunkiness out of here so it's not so tedious. All right. I actually had a bit of fun riding to work lately. It's been cooler in the mornings until the last few days, but there was one morning where it was 38, rode in, but cool, was it a lovely ride home, I gotta tell you. There's nothing better than riding home in 70 degree weather. Once it gets up in the 90s, I don't care who you are, it's, you know, it's not always comfortable riding. And I I bought this really nice climb mesh jacket, which I'll do another video on separately, which, uh, you know, I'm getting, a, I'm almost 60 years old and uh, trying to be aware of uh, the damage the sun can do to your skin, uh, <laughs> plus the black top too. <laughs> we don't talk about stuff like that. So what I do is, uh, what, I, what I've done is I've... Um, bought a, a mesh armored climb jacket, which I love climb as a brand, a little bit more expensive. You pay a bit more, but you get what you pay for. Beautiful jacket. The air just flows through it. It's like air conditioning as you ride. And uh, there are some videos out there. I, I can't tell you the names of the guys off the top of my head, but they've done tests with heat guns where they they, they put the heat gun and they, and they um, take a measurement off your skin. And then they take a, they put the jacket on and then um, I take another measurement and uh, the temperature off the jacket is considerably less than what's on your skin. So that's, that's telling us that we're dehydrating, we're, we're damaging our skin. Younger guys, I don't think really care too much about that. I probably wouldn't have done when I was younger. But um, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to be a little bit more aware of things like skin cancer or, or uh, other issues that come with being out in the sun too long. So I do try and wear a jacket. I didn't wear a jacket um, a few times on rides last summer, but this summer, a little bit different. So just, just a bit aware of it. That's just, you take that for what it's worth. So anyway, okay, we've got this already T-tapped in. The ground is hooked up. We're very close to being done. So now there's a cover on this, which you remove. Here, try to get the camera in on it. I'm kind of doing this and I'm suddenly realizing I'm not filming it. So there are pots here and LEDs. You won't see the LEDs yet until the bike's powered up. Uh, those pots are adjustable. You can make changes to this uh, setup. It comes default set for an 1800C. Um, I don't know if it's for the C, that, I think for all of the variants of the, the Honda uh, 1800, the uh, uh, settings are pretty much the same, I think, I believe, because the engine settings are pretty much the same. So anyway, these are adjustable. If you want to tweak it a little bit more, we're not going to get into that at this point. I'm going to go with the stock settings, which should be right for the bike. That's one of the things that they claim. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> Once you fire this thing up, it's supposed to sound better immediately. All right, so we're going to clip this back in. This is the ECU. I'm going to put that back in its little slot here on the bike there's two little holders either side it just kind of snaps in there nothing fancy and the module is going to sit um, I'm assuming it sit on top but we'll, we'll we'll look through the instructions and see what it says so after reading the instructions uh, it just says put this on top of the ECU now I could put it here but I'm not 100% confident that that's going to be entirely clear of the seat so I'm going to put it down here it puts a little bit of I have to do some 
routing of the wire in there, but that's what the cable ties are for. So I'm actually going to set it down here where it's stepped down. Down here, and I'm going to remove the cover again and turn the ignition on and we'll check all the lights, make sure everything's working. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back. The uh, module is now secured to the ECU with uh, the Velcro that's included. I think I showed you that at the beginning. And now what we have is these three pots here and it's time to check them. So if I remember to grab the instructions, I could do that right now. Here we go, hang on a sec. I'm gonna fetch them. This is my little setup here. Sitting here, Oh, how did that get there? It's me. Okay, so now, um, again, I'm gonna do this from the instructions because this is probably how you're gonna do it or you'll read ahead and understand before you do it. I'm kind of doing both. So um, we're gonna verify that everything's set up properly. So we're gonna turn the ignition on, but don't start it. Oh, look, we've got all our LEDs just came on. They should all be unsteady. All right. If they're not, your ground connection is bad or you've got uh, a wire hooked up wrong. Again, this is sounds so obvious me saying this, but it's what it says right here on the instructions. Just proving that you can't really go wrong if you follow these. And if you, hopefully the video is helping you too. So now here we go. Start the motorcycle, let it idle. Oops, can I reach out? So anyway, as I was saying, if you couldn't hear over the engine noise, that single solid green light is what you're looking for. If you get that, that means you've hooked up your pink and blue stripe, your pink and yellow stripe, your brown, and you've also connected your ground properly and you've got a good ground connection. What that means is you deserve another beer. And mine just happens to be over there, which is rather puzzling because my beer is usually closer to me than that not sure how that happened but anyway i probably shouldn't touch that now because i'm going to go out for a test drive make sure everything's working all right make sure the governor's looking good and feeling good i don't know if it module helps it look better but uh, anyway it's got to feel right hopefully the popping on d-cell has gone away and uh the bike in general is running great so i'll get back to you as soon as we get done Okay guys, just got back from a test ride. All I can say is very, very happy. The uh, fuel module has taken care of one issue that I was really, really hoping it would, and that is the popping on deceleration. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. It no longer lives here. It's also changed the exhaust note a little bit. It's a little deeper, not quite so shrill, um, still nice and loud, still full, but it, it is deeper and, it, and it's certainly, cruising now in third gear around the 30 mile an hour speed zones before it was popping it was it wasn't a pleasant tone it's a great sounding exhaust system especially at idle but that fuel management system has really smoothed that out it's gone a little less vibration in the mirrors too maybe maybe i'm thinking it is i don't know but it seems that everything is smoother extremely happy kudos to cobra for making a really great product I didn't have any doubts that it would take care of the uh, the issues, but now I'm absolutely over the moon. Fantastic ride. It feels like a new bike. It's like riding with a stock exhaust, but five times as loud and, and more pleasing to the ear. So um, in conclusion, if you've got aftermarket pipes on a VTX 1800, go with the fuel management if you haven't already. You will not regret it. I got the... Um, Probably the, the, the one up from the basic model, and just because I didn't want to pay 300, 400 bucks for one. That, uh, yes, it's nice to better control it with the phone app, but as far as I'm concerned, if you set it and it's working, I'm gonna leave it alone anyway. 
if you've uh, if you're using cobra pipes go with a cobra module or you know whatever aftermarket pipes you're using i highly recommend fuel management have fun safe riding and we'll see you again soon cheers and take care uh -huh.